and welcome to another Blossom Crochet tutorial. If this is your first time at my channel then do click that subscribe button and the little bell button so that you get a notification every time I upload a new tutorial. This particular one is going to be for this really beautiful ridged ripple baby blanket. So I do have a tutorial on my channel for a normal ripple baby blanket and I will link that below. But this one is different because in this tutorial I will show you how to create the ridges so you can see it dips and rises with every row so you get a really nice texture to your blanket. Now for those wondering about the colours I will list them down below but I will also link to the video where I talk about these particular yarns as well so you can check that out. And for your information, I have been doing two rows of each colour. So you can do as many rows of, of the colours that you're using as you like. But if you wanted this particular effect, I have done two rows of each colour. Because that way you get one row standing out towards you and one row falling back. And then the next row in the new colour st sticks out and the next row dips back. And I just personally like the effect that that gives. But that is just my blanket that I have been working on myself and for the purpose of the tutorial I am literally just going to use some Shapies Colour Crafty yarns and I'm going to just use two different shades so that I can show you how to change colour. So you want to create your foundation chain. Now you want to do a foundation chain for the width that you want your project to be and it needs to be a multiple of 12. So as Lot, as wide as you want your project to be as long as it is a multiple of 12. So for my sample piece here I have just done a chain of 36. And once you have completed the width that you require you need to add on three more chains onto the end. So one, two and three onto the end. Obviously if you're not sure how to do your slip knot and chain then just check out my absolute beginner series which is on my channel as well. So we've added on our three chains and we are now ready to work back along this row. So we want to, the whole of this project is done using treble crochets. Now remember that is UK treble in the US. This is your double crochet. So the whole project is done using trebles. So we want to start in the fourth chain from the hook, so you want you never count the one on your hook. You want to go one, two, three, and then this is our fourth chain. And we're going to treble into that stitch. So you want to yarn over, insert into that stitch, yarn over and pull up. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we have now got what looks like two trebles next to each other here. And we're then going to do one treble crochet into the next three stitches. So into the next one, you want to yarn over, insert, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's one. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, that's two, and then a third into the next stitch. So you've now got your three trebles that you've just done, and we're going to ignore these end two for now. We now want to create our first dip in our work. So to create a dip, you're going to treble two stitches together two times. So to do that you're going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up and you'll then yarn over, pull through two. But you'll stop there and you'll yarn over once more and insert into the next stitch along on that foundation chain, yarn over and pull up, you'll now have four loops. Yarn over, pull through two and then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three of those remaining loops. So you have just treble crocheted those two stitches together and you're going to do that again. So yarn over into the next stitch, yarn over, 
pull up, yarn over, pull through two and stop. And then you'll yarn over and go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up. You'll have four loops this time. Yarn over, pull through two and then yarn over, pull through all three of those loops. So that will create the dip. And then we're on to our threes again, so we want to do one treble into the next three stitches. So it's one, two, and three. So your dips and your peaks will always be separated by three trebles. So to create the peak, we are going to do two trebles into the same stitch two times. So into this next stitch, you'll do two trebles. It's one, yarn over and back into that same stitch. You're going to do a second treble. And then you're going to repeat that again into the next stitch. You'll do two trebles again, all in the same stitch. That's one and two and then again you're going to do your three trebles so one treble into the next three stitches one two and three and so now we're back to doing a dip so again, we're going to treble crochet two together two times. So yarn over and insert, yarn over and pull up, and yarn over, pull through two and stop. And then into the next stitch, yarn over and insert, yarn over and pull up, and you've got four loops. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three. And then you'll do that again. So yarn over and insert, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two and stop, yarn over, insert into the next chain, yarn over and pull up and now you should have four. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three. So that has created the next dip. And so now we want to do our three trebles again when then we will create our peak. So one treble into the next three chains. So one, two, and three. And again, we're on to a peak now. So you want to do two trebles in the next two stitches. So that's one and two, both in the same chain and repeat. So two more stitches in the next chain. One and two and that has created our next peak. You can see mine is curling. Don't worry, it's absolutely normal. It will flatten out with the next row. So that's my peak created and then we need to do our three trebles back down again. So one treble into the next three stitches. Two. And three. And we're ready then to create another dip. So this is going to be my final dip because I'm only doing a short piece obviously. So yarn over and pull through two and stop and then yarn over and insert, pull up and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three, do that one final time, yarn over and pull through two and stop, yarn over, insert and pull up, yarn over, pull through two and then yarn over, pull through all three. So you just want to repeat that now all the way along your foundation chain and I will meet you as you get towards the other end and after you have done your final 
treble of two together to create your dip, you should have one, two, three, four stitches left. So I've just done my final dip. So I want to do my three trebles as normal. So one treble into the next three stitches. Three. And then in my very final chain here, as we did at the beginning, we had two trebles at the beginning here. You want to finish on two trebles as well. So that will be the same for every single row that you do. You will start and end with two trebles in the same stitch. So you're going to pop two trebles into that final chain. That's one and two. So that is your very first row completed. Obviously the ripples aren't massively defined at this point, but they will become much more defined as you work up the pattern. So now we're ready to move on to row two. So to move on, you want to chain three and turn. And so now we are going to do a treble crochet into the base of the stitch where we've just come up from, where our chain is, into the base of that stitch just here, you're going to do a treble. So yarn over and insert, yarn over and pull up, and then complete your treble. And so we're going to forget about that now. I always do that to start and then I forget and then I start counting my threes after I've done that. And so we're going to start counting our threes now and we are also going to start creating our ridges from this point. So you can see here at the top of your stitches you have these little V's and we are going to be working into the back loops only. So you can see you've got a front loop and a back loop. So we want to work just into the back loops only. Normally you would go through the whole of the stitch here, but we're not. We're just going to go through the back loop, just the back one. So we've worked our treble into the base of that one, and so we're working now on top of the next stitch, which will be your treble from your previous row. So you're going to yarn over, and again, you only want the back loop. So yarn over. And then we're going through the back loop of that on the V at the top. You just want the back loop. And then you'll complete your treble as normal. So that's one. So remember we're going to do one into the next, into the three stitches. So that's one. Yarn over, go through the back loop only. That's two. And three. And all of these stitches are only in the back loop of that V. So we now need to create our dip once more. And you'll do that in the exact same way. You will treble two together. So still only working in the back loops. Yarn over, pull through two. And then yarn over, insert into the next stitch. Yarn over and pull up. Yarn over, pull through two and pull through all three. So that is going to create our dip again. So you want to repeat that. So you're going to treble the next two stitches together. And again, you are still only working in the back loops of those stitches. So that now has created our dip once more. Then you want to do your three trebles. One, two and three. So we want to do the peak now. So again, same as before, you're just going to do two trebles into two stitches. So two into that first one and two trebles into the next. And then three three trebles again, so one into the next three stitches, one, two, 
and three and then you're ready once more to create your next dip. So you will treble two stitches together two times and you can see already we are starting to get that nice ridge. So if you want to continue that now you can rewind it to when we did this first dip here and you will continue that doing your three trebles in between dips and peaks and I will meet you on your final dip as you get to the other end. I've just completed my last dip stitches. I then want to do my three trebles. You should have four stitches left here, three really obvious ones and then the one that's always the bit funny one from the previous row. So you want to do your three trebles as normal. So one, two, and three and then just in the same way as we started the row with two trebles we need to finish with two trebles so this one's always a bit awkward because it's from our foundation row that we did but you want to do two trebles into the top of that turning chain so yarn over insert into the top of that stitch and do two trebles one and on your second treble if you are planning to change colour every two rows like I did on my example piece then once you've yarned over and pulled through two once you've got your two loops left on your hook you just want to bring in your new yarn and you're going to pull that through those last two stitches I'm going to do a chain one, that never counts as a stitch though, it is purely to secure that change. And I'm going to snip off my grey. And then again, personal preference, I'm just going to tie those together so that I know they're nice and secure. And then I will just start this next row off with you. You again will want to chain three and turn and as always we want to start with two trebles in this stitch so your chain three always counts as the first one and then you will do a second one into that base of that same stitch and then you'll forget about those and you will start counting your threes and again we are going to be working in the back loop again so when you turn it on to face you you will be working in the back loops once again and that is what will give you this really nice backwards and forwards ridged effect by doing in the back loops every time. And you will just carry on that now in the exact same way as, early, as before. You will do your three trebles, again back loops only, one. two and three so this is the row now that you will repeat over and over again then you will create your dip by treble crochet two together two times so that's one so you should be quite good at doing this bit now so I will be going that little bit faster and that is my new dip created. Your three trebles again, so one into the next three stitches, all in the back loops. Two and three. And then you will create your peak. So your two trebles into the next two stitches. So that's two into that first one and two into the next and then you will continue that all the way along once more and I will meet you just after your final dip and we will just finish off this repeat row together. So I've finished my dip stitches and then I need to do my three trebles again. So one two and three 
and then I need to finish off as always with my two trebles into that final stitch. So again, it's that chain three we did at the beginning of the last row. You want to do two trebles into that stitch. So one and two. And again, I did two rows of each color for my pastel rainbow blanket that I showed you. And so you will complete that last row over and over again until your project is as long as you want it to be. But that is it for the ridged ripple tutorial. I really hope you like the variation on that stitch. I'll just bring my rainbow one back. So the obviously the normal ripple pattern is absolutely gorgeous as well, but I really do love anything that adds a little bit of texture. I just think is is wonderful. So I do hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and remember to subscribe and check out all of the links in the description as well and I will see you for another tutorial very soon.